May is a month that can bring us all kinds of weather from snow to swelter and heat. It can also uh, bring us a, a celebratory occasion, the Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And this morning, Rob introduces us to a scientist that plays a pretty big role uh, in your world, right? That's right. His name is Tetsuya, or Ted Fujita, and uh, his work, of course, is the basis for a tool we still use today. I uh, was born in Japan, of course way back in uh, 1920, on October 23. Then I'm uh, 67.4 years old. That is the voice of one of the most influential Asian Americans ever to work in the field of atmospheric sciences, Dr. Ted Fujita. You probably know that name from the Fujita scale, the original tornado scale that he developed in 1971, right here in the Midwest. It's the basis for the enhanced Fujita scale that meteorologists use today. His birthplace of Japan was key to his later scientific discoveries. UW-Madison research scientist Lee Orff explains. He saw the damage left behind from the atomic bombs. He came to America, and he, I think when he started uh, looking at downbursts, which are explosive downdrafts that form out of thunderstorms and spread out, he started noticing damage patterns on the ground that actually kind of reminded him of what he had seen from those original bombs. Interestingly, it was a certain weather pattern that allowed Fujita to pursue his atmospheric discoveries. He was living in Kokura, Japan during World War II, which was the primary target for the Fat Man atomic bomb. But on the morning of August 9, 1945, the city was obscured by clouds and smoke, so the bomb was dropped on the secondary target, Nagasaki. Fujita was fascinated by the environment from very early on. He shared a story from his youth during a 1988 interview for the American Meteorological Society. My father really got mad because uh, when typhoon came, you know, I, he found I was staying top of the roof. <laughs> and my father said, what you doing, you know, my son? I said, I'm measuring wind. He said, oh, it's the most dangerous place. He dragged me down. Once again, a young Fujita had been spared to continue his weather research. That fascination with the wind eventually paid off. He found them, and he, people didn't believe that microburst existed. He led two field programs, one in northern Illinois and one in Colorado, and he found downbursts. He found them, he would measure them, he, he took radar observations of them, and he came up with sort of an idea of how they work, and it was, it was transformational research. That transformation happened only after Fujita moved to the United States to work for the University of Chicago. Lee figures that choice of location also had an impact on Fujita's work. If you're going to study thunderstorms and downbursts and tornadoes, a great place to do it is the Midwest. I mean, we have a lot of that weather here. As in childhood, it seems Fujita took advantage of the weather around him to advance his love of the atmospheric sciences. To take his study of tornadoes to the next level, he went to the damage zone to study the impact and essentially reverse engineer what had happened. Fujita revolutionized the whole storm surveying procedures that we did. He turned it kind of into a, a crime scene type of investigation where you might not know exactly everything that happened, but you had to kind of piece together the details of the damage pattern. That's warning coordination meteorologist Tim Hallback with the Milwaukee office of the National Weather Service. Fujita's investigative technique is one that he still uses today in the field. When we get on scene, we typically find the first worst damage and assess that location. And then from there, we just go in both directions until we can't find any more damage. So that's what Dr. Fujita did back in the day. All of that stuff goes back to Dr. Fujita's earlier work, where he was out there in the field looking for the patterns, looking for the, looking for the damage patterns on the ground, and then telling a story. A story that has helped save numerous lives as we learn more about tornadoes and how they form. But perhaps the greatest story was his own. Dr. Tetsuya Theodore Ted Fujita. Born in Japan, made famous in America. That is so fascinating. Fascinating, wow. yeah. I mean, when we were, you know, looking at the Heritage Month, and the first name that popped to my mind was yeah. Dr. Fujita, Dr. Fujita, of course, because, you know, we use his scale every day, and sometimes you forget that the Fujita part of the Fujita scale is a man. It's yeah. A, it's a yeah. guy. We say EF1, EF2, right. whatever it is. Without him, we wouldn't have any of that, and it's led to a lot of development and a lot of groundbreaking, uh, you know, discoveries within that field. So. And lives saved over That's the course absolutely. of the Absolutely. The more we understand about it, the better we are yeah. to, like, warn people and give them some time to get out of the way and, you know, and, and bunker down. My very first thought when you said Japan, born in 1920, was okay how old was he during World right. War II and a fork in the road moment there. Right and I mean not only did that kind of like make 
for his scientific research because it kind of gave him the thought process of how damage patterns happen. But just the fact that, you know, he was living at the ground zero for the yeah. Batman bomb, but the weather kept it from yeah. happening. That's hmm. a great Incredible. story. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rob.